boy got no chill. That boy ain't got no chill. That boy got no chill. Like for real. That boy got no chill. That boy ain't got no chill. You gon' tell it to him straight, don't care how you feel. They ain't feelings, I'm counting millions, this ain't no cap. Shoot through the ceiling, look how they act when I enter the building. Like for real. What I look like taking it back. If I said it, then I meant it. Bitch, let's get it, gon' pull up the stats. Pull him up, right I'm pulling up. Hop out, what we talking about? Big dog, don't need clout. When it comes to it, it's no doubt. Whole presence, legend. Control the room when I step in. Got it jumping off the meter. Welcome to Gills Arena. On fire, no fever. Natural born leader. Official like a referee whistle. Been earn my stripes, no zebra. Hey, let's get it, let's get it. Triple double, you in trouble. Who want a verses? They saw my sneaks. I do this here on repeat. I can do this in my sleep. You know I ain't lying. I be flying like I'm Zion. I be Laughing, hate is crying. Podcast doing numbers. Look like I'm handling my business. Always keeping it a hundred. Who want to smoke? Run it. Cause you talking like you want it. All I know is when it come to this basketball, you better bring that dog. Yeah. That boy got no chill. That boy ain't got no chill. That boy got no chill. Like for real. That boy got no chill. That boy ain't got no chill. You gon' tell it to him straight. Don't care how you feel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How you guys doing? I mean, what's up? I mean, man, I look so plain now, man. My stuff looks plain now, y'all. I'm still working. I'm still working it. That boy got no chill. That's for real. How y'all doing? Hey. <laughs> I pissed them people off today. Woo! Well, I guess last night and they got it today. I really got people in they feeling. I ain't in no hotel. I'm in my room. I'm in my, that, this just, <laughs> nah, this just big ass TV. This is the TV. This is, this is the TV joint. Nah, this my, this my, uh, hold on. I think I can do it. Hold on. Hold on, let me see. Let me, let me. Hold on, y'all. No, not that one. Hold on. Oh. I don't know how to, I don't know how to change it. So, <laughs> I don't know how to change it. Nah, so this is this is my what's the name room. So like look, right? They go my old little thing. Y'all know that. So you go to lights right there, you go to they go to shoes over there. All right. Uh you go to, hold on. Let me, let me, here, I can show y'all. Oh, let's see, let's turn it maybe around. See if I want to turn it around, I could then show y'all. Yeah, I can do that. So when they say I don't, I don't, I don't watch games. That's all I do. Okay, all right. All right. So look, how y'all? How I want to pit? Listen, you know what I like about the internet. This is what. This was what. What what makes people think that I troll and I just say stuff, right? Because I know I know vast of the majority just hear keywords and then they stop thinking, right? So here was the here was the actual question to the Jokic stuff. So so we can put it in some kind of context, right? Here is the actual topic. The topic was. ESPN's Tim reported that one NBA executive believes that Jokic winning his third MVP in four years is not going to age well, right? And then his quote is, I had somebody with other team who was saying you can't in historical context, you cannot give this guy three MVPs in four years. Basically, 
his take was that's not going to age well for all of that. Why can't you? And second of all, I'm very comfortable with how that ages. The guy is 28 years old, already has final two, uh, two final MVPs, uh, is as dominant as, as any player that we've seen in the long, in this long, he's going to be a top 10 player all time when he's done playing. Right. Okay. That's the context of the question. So I was asked, what are your thoughts? Is what he's saying true? And I said this, I started off saying, well, the first part of this comment is horrible when you think about it. He is saying, which means if he had a vote, he's saying you cannot you cannot give this man three MVPs. You cannot give him his third MVP, which makes me think, well, damn, how many times did y'all do this in history? Went into it saying, hold on, for history, we cannot give him this. Didn't do it for Jordan, which we know he would have won seven. Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, because he got in trouble, they used that saying, we can't do it. Giannis, when Giannis was back-to-back -back MVP, and he should have won his third, but they gave it to Jokic, right? Last year, right, Jokic would have been on his third, and then you gave it to Embiid, right? Which means what they're doing is the fucked up thing. Not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is watching them change history, distort it, to make it fit a narrative, and I'm just calling it out. Now they're mad that I'm calling it out. That's how this is working. So what I said is, risk. isn't Steve Nash MVP worse than Jokic? So let's, let's try it. Let's, let's, let's ask this question. Now, MVP criteria, you can't get mad at me for using the criteria, their criteria, your production plus your team success. Okay. Steve Nash and his production plus his team success. When Steve Nash won the MVP, his team was ranked one. His team was the, they had the best record in the NBA. So he, he has a one. His second one, they had the fourth best record. They used that against Kobe and said, well, he didn't have Amari Stoudemire, so he's the winner. Kobe team, the record was 10th, and he had a historic year, and they said, hell no, no thank you. Okay, cool. So we know what your criteria is. Has nothing to do with you taking that bum-ass team. Y'all rank. They were going to rank last in the West, and they end up making the playoffs. Didn't give no credit to Kobe for that. So Nash was one and two. All right, you want to say Carmelo and his team was second and first, right? So when you add it up, one and four, second and first, plus their, 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 uh, their success individually. Now, You have Westbrook. He's not in this category, but it has to have context. The context. Westbrook averaged a triple double, which his team was in 10th. Which means 10th, what did he do individually since his team was in 10th? Triple double, first time in history since the 70s. Okay. The first time it was done was Michael Jordan in 70 and 88. Right? 88. His team was seventh. But individually, how did he come from seven to win it? Scoring title, steals title. Defensive Player of the Year title, dunk contest, all-star MVP, historic thing, which is from an individual, the best individual year any player has had. 
will be year 88. Now, let's go up to 2000, 2021. Jokic team was fifth. All right. What did he do? What was the, what was the history here? Okay, no, 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 no history. There's so he didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing historic, right? Okay, so he didn't do nothing historic to win that. And let me I just want to make sure we're not missing some. Nope, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't do anything historic. What he did was. He almost had a triple double, <laughs> right? Almost. Well, almost had a triple double, and I think in two thousand one, two thousand one, did Westbrook actually have a triple double that season, or no? I don't think he did, but let me just check. I don't think he did. I'm thinking, was he, was he with the Wizards when he? When, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. 2021. No, I think he. I think that triple double came on. Ah. 2021. Jokic got credit for almost winning the triple double while a motherfucker averaged the triple double. <laughs> <laughs> think about it think about what i'm saying he is being praised for his passing ability oh a big man can pass big man is almost having a triple double oh my god while a dude is averaging a triple double and let's look how we justify it well not us real basketball players don't justify basketball we don't say a big man gets credit for passing, then say a little man is sat patting for rebounding. We don't do that. We just say, what did the basketball player do? One average a triple double. The media said, fuck off. Oh, Jokic got seven assists, eight assists, MVP. So they give him the MVP. When that it because, and this is why they don't like what I'm saying. They did not want to give Giannis his third MVP in a row because they're protecting birds three in a row. So therefore, you don't want to give it to Giannis whose stats match everyone else in history. When Giannis won his, his two, his team was number one both times. Who you think was number one that year? Giannis. So therefore, they don't want to give it to Giannis. So that means... They went down to some mediocre stats, well, great stats, mediocre record, and justified it. Okay. Eh, whatever. New blood. Y'all always hear that. Ah, oh, the voter, voters get voters fatigue. How the fuck do you get voters fatigue? What does that even mean? And then the following year, here we go again with justification. What a media wrote me behind the scenes when he said, what is my criteria? They said, what is your criteria for saying this? I said, my criteria is the same criteria you used, right? They haven't responded since, <laughs> right? I mean, okay, so this is what they, they did. They said, he single-handedly carried the nuggets without Jamal Murray or MPJ for his second MVP, led the league in triple doubles, finishing as the only player to ever average 20 points, 10 rebounds, nine assists on at least 60% shooting over a single season. Do you listen to how they put a stat that they just make up? The stat is the only player ever to average 20 points 10 rebounds, nine assists, at least shoot 60% over a single season. I, 
I was confused at the beginning of it. He single-handedly carried the Nuggets. They were in 10th. They had the 10th best record. What kind of carrying did he do? He didn't do this. He wasn't carrying them above. He, he's holding them up. They were in 10th. 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 Kobe Bryant with the Laker team, who was supposed to be last, he carried them to the eighth spot. No credit. Westbrook's team, trash. Trash. He carried them with triple doubles to the playoffs. No credit. You're giving us a credit for 20, 10, and 9. 20, 10, and 9. Almost a triple double when we just watched a man in five years, four of the years, average that, where you publicly said that's stat padding. The triple double is irrelevant. We just went off of four, three years hearing how the triple double was irrelevant. It's meaningless to then hear you say how great of a basketball player and it's refreshing to see a big man pass the ball. Why are you using big man in the argument? Why isn't he just a basketball player who almost had a triple-double? You want to use big man to make it seem like some, 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 some thing. That's, that's not how you do it. You can't use key words to justify your argument. Oh, the only big man that averaged, you can't do that. It's a basketball player. There's a basketball player that had four triple doubles. Now justify, what is historic here? Here's his, this is the historic that the writers are using. The only player to ever average 20, 10, and nine, whoo, shooting 60%. So that means if Westbrook, had 59%, they jump it up to 60%. So he fits it. Now, what did Westbrook shoot? I'm pretty sure it's some bullshit. But <laughs> uh, four, do, 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 43, 47%. So that, yeah, 47, 42, 45. Yeah. But you use, you use little things to put people in. His team was 10th when he won it. With no hit, he didn't set history. You created a stat for history. Six in the West, no real second option. Now, when Westbrook went to triple doubles, his team was had the eighth best record. Who was the fucking second option? When you say no real second option, who is his second option? You can't change the metrics on it, even if you do. I will allow you to say whatever you fucking want to do. When you break it down, and here's my trick against the rest of the world and you guys. When you break it down, he's a multiple MVP. You have his stats, you have his team record, then you add it against the field. This is what I did. I went against the field. Now, how many people, because I still have to justify what the original question was. Can Will this, will this age bad if he win his third one? So I said, all right, two or more. Okay, we got MJ, Moses Malone, Bird, Magic, Duncan, Nash, LeBron James, Curry, Giannis, Jokic, Karl Malone. Right? So that's that's the list. Now, with Jokic two MVPs, his numbers plus his team success, fifth and tenth. Woo! Ouch! That is. What place do you put him in when Nash's team was first and fourth? Um, 
Carl Malone team was second and first. Giannis team was first and first with his numbers. Obviously, Moses Malone team was first, second, and first. Um, you got Bird, first, first, first. MJ, seventh, first, first, and second. LeBron James, fourth, first, first, first. First, fourth, first, first, first. Bruh, he was four, 48 and 34. That ain't 10th material. Try chicken. I don't give a fuck what you think. That is the 10th best record in the NBA. Google. It's tied for 10th at that. It's tied. Not even 10th by himself, right? So I could have been the I could have been the douche and said 11th, <laughs> but I said 10th. It's tied for 10th, 10th best record. And then thick chicken to even add context, this record is the worst record on an MVP winner. He is the only multiple MVP winner that didn't win that didn't have 50 wins. So when you rank it against the other 10, where does it fall, sir? When Jordan team was seventh, they won 50 games. I mean, both, both in context, both Jokic MVPs, he didn't have 50 wins, but one was a shortened season. So he has a shortened season, so that don't count. That was the, the, the 47. They didn't have they didn't have a full season when LeBron won his without 50 wins. That was your short season when he when this one right here, you can count it 48. And 30, that's a full season. He's the only one that didn't have 50 wins on an MVP. So when you put all the criteria together, it ranks last. I'm sorry. I'm sorry did that you didn't get the sugar daddy out your ear. I'm sorry the way it was cut made it seem like I said the worst player in VP history. Then you start looking at the, no criteria. Now, now let's try this because I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Watch the internet goes crazy, but not you 600. You 600, y'all will get the heads up. When he wins the third one, because this year, this is his year. He hits the criteria of what the NBA did. Last year, he hit the criteria. Last year was his year. They they fucked him. Last year was his MVP. Team was one. He dominated, played while almost had it. What he did last year was his MVP from the NBA criteria. This year is his by the NBA criteria. So when he wins this third one, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to be dramatic because, you know, when you're dramatic, people think you're really mad. So I'm going to pretend to be mad. And then I'm going to say, this is the worst three-time MVP in NBA history. This is some bullshit. All you guys will hear. Well, not you guys. You guys, y'all got the joke right now. All they will hear is I say it, he is the worst winner in history they're not even going to contemplate that i said three-time mvp to say well who's on that list right so you, they will kill me oh my god oh he, fuck, he's an idiot he's stupid isn't this and then when i come back i will say well how about this you rank them the list is three time or more mvp you have LeBron James, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Jordan, and Jokic. Where do you rank Jokic out of the uh, out of the five? Then then you're then he's last, right? So then I went viral again. <laughs> viral again because people are too dumb to hear everything, right? So I was correct. He was last out of the five. That's all I'm pointing out. <laughs> Someone has to be five. 
All I'm doing is just giving in. I'm just putting it in context. And then I don't care what y'all do for that, right? If, if I say, hey, uh, you know, this is the ugliest chick out of singers and then have this group of singers and then y'all say, well, she's beautiful this and then I give you the other people and then y'all be like, oh yeah, I mean, compared to that list, hell yeah, she's... <laughs> I'm just stating the facts. If you don't like it, I'm sorry, that ain't my problem. I'm just giving you the facts and then how you do with it, what you do. But I know people stop listening. That's all. That's what I'm good at. Knowing you're not going to listen to the full thing and then say, okay, all right, he said, he did say three times, how many three-time MVP winners are there? And then you start writing it, and then you say, ah, okay, he's right. God damn it, I can't come back. But I know the media don't do that. Well, the smart media don't. You don't see the big media jump out the window anymore because they start getting to Googling, and then they realize, okay, he almost got us again. Someone has to be five. <laughs> I can't help it if I give you him. Right? I can't help it if I give you him. Right? The top 75 list. If I do all the stats and then say, this is the worst 75 player in NBA history. Woo! What do you think is going to happen? They're going to tell me how great he was and, oh, he did this. Nigga, you didn't do that. You can't do what he could do. <laughs> and then I'm saying, but was I wrong? When you rank them, if you rank them in order and you take their stats, someone has to be 75. <laughs> someone has to do it. Someone has to be at the bottom. I can't help it if I made it seem a little different, but that's all I'm saying. So if he wins his third one out of multiple threes, three or more, he will technically be the worst three-time MVP or more. But you got, shh, don't tell the rest of the world that I'm going to do that because I need them to, I need to keep, I need them to keep me going. That's all. Right? Will I take him over Carl Malone? Yeah. Will I take him over Nash? Shit, I mean, I mean, the motherfucker can pass. Yeah. Will I take him over Tim Duncan? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Depending on my team, but most likely, yeah. Right? So is, uh, this is not about the individual player himself. This is just the wording on the criteria, and someone out of these 10 has to be last. And I'm just, I'm just pointing out, don't get mad at me. Now, I was supposed to do this a long time ago, but we're going to go ahead and this is a Rick Chapman went on a podcast. I guess it's the Lebetard show and he spoke about the Euro and the white American and this is this is great information this is this is great information here's why we know the white American got pushed out of the NBA and the Euro took over white America and that's who is the new white person. Now, no one really explained what happened to the white American and what he's saying. Oh,
Guys come from places other than America mm -hmm. and are killing also it. clearly white mm -hmm. and clearly killing it. Mm -hmm. When you think about why it is. I know why it is. Or I think I do. Why is it that America has an endangered species list when it comes to its white NBA stars and the rest of the world is flourishing? They're not dissuading their kids from playing basketball. They're not. We are. We're, oh, I can't play that sport. It doesn't suit your race. That's not how these guys are brought up. Exactly. So we don't put Billy and Johnny in. We put them in soccer and we put them in baseball and we put them in a lacrosse and tennis and everything else basketball that's for them it's not for our type that's i mean i'm not gonna <laughs> listen 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 i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna use the race car because he said them <laughs> right we know who them is right he's he's saying once the black athlete came in and started dominating he's saying that white parents White parents were, were discouraging their kids from going down this road in sports. Like, oh, you can't do it. So he's saying that the white parents was basically holding their white kids and putting them in other sports. Mm. Fucked up. The other thing, they know time and score. They know the possession. They know everything because they've been coached extremely hard from a very young age. And if they talk back this or that, no, fuck you. Sit down. You're not going to play. They don't coddle their overseas AAU aged kids in Europe. Guys are not coddled. Guys are not coddled playing professional ball in Europe. When European players come over here now, especially when you can't hold and grab like you can, they feel like it's easier as the athletes are better. The coaching though, they look at it as, you know, oh, we're not being coached up real hard around here. And it's kind of more like a vacation for them from sure. the coaches they played with growing up. We start coddling, some of us do, start coddling our, our kids. And if they don't start on this AAU team, we take them to another AAU team. And pretty soon you're making your kid an excuse maker. These guys come from. And watching the AAU, it's true. In this sense, I, I, you know, I don't know what a kid is tell, telling this kid. Right? I don't know what parents are telling the kid. This is what I, I can confirm. When the player doesn't play or the coach is yelling at a player, those parents transfer. I'm going to go to another team. I'm going to start my own my own team. You know, these kids got money. So that's where all these AAU teams is coming from. So what ends up happening is kids are not being coached anymore, right? They are being coddled. They, they are that whole bullshit of there's no losers. We all are winners here. We don't need to keep the score. That shit is hurting a group of people you're taking away competitive so they're not being competitive anymore because they're being handicapped at a small age right oh you you're not playing the coach yell at you we're going to create our own team we're going to create our own team so now the kid has never fought when you go overseas it's fuck you It is they don't they don't they don't take they don't care about nothing. It's the the coach hits on you, spits on you, do all that. So you learn tough skin from an early age. Oh, here you yell at a kid too loud and he cries. Trust me, he ain't coming back the next week. Um, so I understand where it's coming from. I never heard it. I never heard it come out someone's mouth but when you guys name like uh gordon haywood and all that yeah but they're not stars anymore so um when i came across that i was like oh that's interesting i really i really want to listen to that really try to do some research on that because just from the aau the aau team the aau circuit parents are emotionally protecting their their kids i am a white american we just don't want it enough Damn it! <laughs> you 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 was that reverse Vigili Largo? What is that shit? What is the uh, what is that uh, the opposite of of you know the Michael Jackson? You the reverse of that? That's it. You you look black than a motherfucker in your avatar. Heroes go pro younger, way better coaching. No, that's facts. A hey, hey, listen, AAU is bad because. AAU is bad because 
most of these most of these um coaches they just want your money right i just want your money i just want your money i'm not you know our team's so good we don't need to practice just come in right you're not there's no 5 days a week practice there's none of that in this circuit and the fact that if you're not super athletic to get by who's teaching you the fundamentals who's who's teaching you the what Jokic and Luka can do no one so now you don't have the the fundamentals that get you past the, the raw athleticism you're just as you're just as uh non-disciplined as the kid that had who's going to have the 40 inch vertical right now we're talking about someone like AR15 i mean you you got mediocre players that you woohoo where's the where's the magics where's the magic i mean not the magic where's the bird type of player where's the um the John Stockton type of player. No, damn. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess it was this shit started back in the 80s. <laughs> I see why. I see why they not really. They don't want Bird legacy to leave. This is a hot take. But it's not a hot take. I, I asked I asked someone, general manager. How come Tatum has never got an MVP off the MVP criteria? He hits it every year for a winner. You know what this person said? Only y'all get the only y'all get to hear this. This they said this. They said Boston is still Boston. And I was like, what does that mean? Boston is still Boston. They said, they said Boston is still Bo so we here's the context. We were talking about like why Shay ain't getting the love. And he said, well, he's in, he's in OKC, right? The OKC media is not pushing him, right? Well, that makes sense. And I said, uh, I said, who did I say? I said, you know, when Westbrook was winning trouble though, he said, nobody like Westbrook. And I said, that's the bad part that you're, you're purposely because you don't like someone you're, you're tweaking stuff. And I said, so wait, Tatum is in a big market. Why isn't Boston pushing him? He said, Boston is Boston. They said Boston media. He said, when was the last MVP from Boston? I said, uh, Bird. He said, exactly. Boston is still Boston. Yeah, they're going to cheer. But they're going <laughs> to... He said, if he was a little bit lighter, <laughs> he would have already had an MVP. They said, Boston ain't, those Boston re beat re reporters ain't pushing the black man to win an MVP in that jersey. I'm like, come on, dog. Hey, nah, not, not, not in this, not in this day. So I don't know. That, that that's I'm, I got to do some research on that one because I don't believe I, I can't believe it. I want the list of writers so we can see who actually votes. So I, I don't know, but the GM said that I'm like, damn, oh, oh, OK. I don't know, but I don't know. But for someone who's in a big market, they sure not. Nah. They not pushing him the way a big market usually gets pushed. And then he asked something. He said this. He said, how come Brunson is not in the MVP talk? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. He said, he don't hit all the criterias. Second option been gone. He's been keeping the team above water. He's been playing well. 
I don't know, man. I don't want to talk about no fucking Brunson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about no goddamn Brunson, y'all. I don't want to talk about no Brunson. Hey, did you guys hear? Did you guys hear that Jason that Jason Williams um Jason Williams and Jalen Rose thing? If you did, how do you how do you feel about it? Because I, it let it, it it lets you know how rough a locker room is, and the locker room is more for the strongest, as for the strongest minds. And you can see when you talk about alpha males and the, the weak don't survive, we don't care about your strength. If, if your mental ain't right, you will be pushed out of the NBA. So when he was with the Bulls, When we was knee deep in the back. It was the end of my rookie year. That's when I hit a utility pole going 70 miles an hour, man. I was only riding for a year, man. It was my way of getting away. I didn't really rock with a lot of my teammates. Like I was cool with like a couple guys. We're playing against a team and I missed some free throws down the stretch. And Jalen Rose called me a choke artist in the media the next day when he was being interviewed. And we won the game. You know, I had Jordan's locker. Like, so that came with pressure, right? Be like, oh, you taking Jordan's locker? I'm like, well, I want some of that to rub off on me. Yeah, I, no. I want it. It all got used against me when stuff started to go bad. This guy feels like he's entitled. I'm like, I don't feel like I'm entitled at all. But like, I didn't know how to get a release from that. And I kind of talked through my own shit, I guess, with riding a motorcycle. So then like that, that led ultimately to me hitting that utility pole going 70 miles an hour and being in the hospital for two and a half months. It was the end of my rookie year. That's when I hit a utility pole going 70 miles an hour. Now, now think about that, dog. Like, he missed two free throws in a game. They still won the game. And the veteran on his team said he's a choke artist in the media. Not in the locker room, in the media. He's a choke artist. Now, most likely, this was probably Jalen Rose's team, and they gave it to, obviously, um, Jason Williams. Jason Williams is the hottest dude on the team, and they were shifting. But you can see how the people that's there before you don't really rock with you like that, right? They try anything to break your will. And he's saying, basically, they didn't like him coming in. He got Michael Jordan's locker. He's coming from Duke Privilege. He's a number three pick. The team is going to him. The guys there before him didn't really rock with him. So he decided he want to ride motorcycles and clear his mind some of these days and end up hitting the pole. Um. The NBA locker room, bro, it's mental. It's mental. You are not going to be a rookie come in here. We see Wimby's teammates, and those are young cats, right? Not passing him the ball. Young, young cats. When you have someone like a Jalen Rose, I don't know if this is a true story. I'm pretty sure he's not going to say it <laughs> in the media without it being somewhat true. And how arrogant he was and how arrogant Duke players are, I'm pretty sure he rubbed people the wrong way. But when you in that locker room, you're being tested every single day. Every single day you are being tested. Your manhood is being tested. Players are looking for a, a chink in your armor. Right? If they can't beat you on the court, they want to see if they can beat you mentally. They want to see if they can beat you mentally. And if you can crack 
Woo, we don't have to worry about you. Lead you down the wor- worst path, right? This survival. Yeah, we're a team. Like when, when you're talking about, you know, alphas and all that, they, people, people in the NBA, they want to follow something. So they're going to the person who can lead them. It ain't about being the strongest physically. Don't give a fuck about how strong you are physically. It's who is who can lead the team to the finish line, which means who is the smartest, who is the cleverest, who has, right? So players are listening to everything. They're going to tell you everything. They're going to say some and see what bites with what. Gil, they said you mad. Euro's taking over. Yeah, I'm mad that out of 450 players, there's four four Euros taking over. I'm I'm mad that four Euros taking over. They can't find a shooting guard that's good enough to take over a small four that can be in the top five. I mean, out of 24 All-Stars, only four of them made the All-Star game, but they're taking over. Whatever narrative they need to use, it's, it's, it's fine with me. Just when they start saying, let's get to the facts, let me know when they're ready to get to the facts. I go by facts. I don't care about the opinion. He should have walked in and challenged Jalen. At the end of the day, he was too soft for that. To be honest, you're right. Once the, the veteran have challenged him in, in the paper, he said to me, this is what he said. He was supposed to come in. If he wasn't going to go to him directly, he should have went back to the media and said, oh, dude, just mad he getting pushed out. He he was supposed to say something. You cannot not say something and let this shit pass because the person who said it, you don't know what he's doing. You don't know what tests he's putting out there. He want to see if you're strong enough. If you can't check me, how the fuck are you going to check Kobe, T-Mac? Those other guard. How you going to? And this is no knock against him. Jay Will was a is a great player. He was phenomenal. I was offended by him. We had a beef. Me and him had a beef. He wasn't. He didn't know we was beefing. <laughs> he didn't know he was beefing with me. I was beefing with him. Here's why. After my rookie year. All right. I went to the Warriors, my agent, and said, hey, Gilbert finished the rookie year well, boom, boom, boom. We were asking for seven years, $24 million. They laughed me off. <laughs> He's not worth $27 million. Woo-hoo. So the whole summer, I'm training. Motherfuckers up. What happened was they thought they were going to get the one or the two pick. And with the second pick in the draft, they were getting a point guard because they needed a point guard. And I'm like, I'm the point guard. They're like, no, if Jason, if we get Jason Williams from Duke with the number two pick, he is the point guard. So I'm like, well, what if I beat him in training camp? What do you mean beat him? What if I beat him? What if he can't guard me? He said, you are 300,000. He is going to be a million. They're not putting a million dollars, two million dollars on the bench and playing you for 300,000. Your ass is going to the bench. They said, he's, they, I was told, you will have to triple his production to start over him, the future. I was training so hard mad at this mad at him yeah i hope he do come we're about to see we're about to see we end up getting the third pick when we played them when that is skull whoo when listen i went i went at this hey listen i went and had his skull i think i had a double double i think i had a double double against him and I'm a, and then he says something. He says something to Dung Levy. I was like, Pfft. so I had I had I went I had sixteen and eleven against him, sixteen points, 
11 assists. I don't even know why I had that many assists. I think I was trying to prove that that I was better than him at what he was great at. He was 4 for 15. He had 11 points, 4 assists. He went to Dunley because I was like I'm coming at him talking shit. You 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 you, you like I don't know what I was saying, but trust me it wasn't nice. He went to Dudley and said, why is he mad at me? <laughs> when I heard that, like, oh, oh, he's, he's, oh, he's a ni- he's nice. He wants to be liked. He wants to be liked. He's asking why I'm mad at him. And then the next game against Chicago, Next game against Chicago, he wasn't there, but I had, uh, he came off the bench, gave him 28. 28. Gave him 28. I seen weakness. Weakness is he's a nice guy. So we do judge. We judge off of everything. But, but this was an example of they won the game, and his, his, his teammate still said it because Jalen Rowe was the best player at this time, and they probably called the play for him. They probably called it for him and not Jalen Rose, and Jalen Rowe threw that out there to, to see what happened. And he didn't get that in return. He didn't get what he, he was – he didn't – he didn't get the response. You, in the NBA, man, you, you got to respond to everything. Even if it's even if it's mental, you have to respond, right? Life, you have to respond to a certain certain extent, right? Like um, you got to, pick, I guess you got to pick your battles, knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them. Um. Ooh, I, I wanna I wanna say I told y'all so. I told y'all so. I wanna raise my hand. I told y'all so. I told y'all. I told. Listen, here we go. Take that, take that, take that. Diddy. I don't know if y'all seen this. Diddy attorney in a little Ross case against Diddy criticized by the judge for the pattern of scandalous Cases, listen, I, I, this is the judge telling the lawyer, the fuck is this? (laughs) What? I told y'all this was going to happen. You got all this shit in here. What the hell does this have to do with the case? What the hell? does this have to do with the case itself? Your case, I know I did say scandalous my bad. (laughs) I I pre-read some shit. What does this have to do with the case itself? You have a whole bunch of shit in here that don't have nothing to do with the case that you have. You have a civil suit about promises to you Right? Promises to you. Um, He, which obviously you can't, you can't, um, you can't prove promises. Right? What the fuck does that, I promise you, like, you're trying to he forced you to do these things. How do you prove that? Right? Oh, he forced you to record. How do you prove that? So all these things he has in this case for a civil suit is irrelevant. It's, all this was for Lil Rod was I have all these things that's damaging. I'm writing it and then I'm I'm giving it to, to Puff and say, hey, if you don't pay me, I, I'm going to put this in the paper. I'm going to foul it. Well, foul it. I don't give a shit. Well, 
The difference between him and what Cassie did. See, they're trying to follow the Cassie mode. He settled with Cassie. He's going to settle with me. The difference of that is this. Cassie was his woman. Right? Now, with his woman, if he physically did anything to her, what a woman going to do? She's going to text message. Puff just did this. Come get me. She's going to take pictures. She's going to, she went to the hospital. Right? So she has timelines, records. If Puff texts her, hey, I'm sorry. She has, the, she has this information. If they're sitting there talking and he's trying to apologize, right? She has a record on. She recorded him. So she has his guilt there so she goes to him and says hey wait hold on this is what i have for you they hear it like, oh, 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 oh i'm settling fuck all that i'm settling here ah all this is a bunch of hearsay so when you look at the like the civil suit is very different than the fed case was well, what the feds is two different things, right? He did a whole bunch of throwing this stuff out there, making all these claims for the feds to come in. Doesn't have nothing to do with him. This has to, the feds have nothing to do with dude right here. This dude just pushed them on to his bullshit. He, his case, he don't have a case. He, he's not going to get settlement. Promises, oh, he touched the middle of my booty hole. How do you how do you prove that? Well, you, 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 did you go to the, did you go to the hospital and take a fingerprint? Got his 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 fingerprint right there. <laughs> I mean, well, well, how do you prove how do you prove that? Oh, he sent the girl over me to try to give me some head in the bathroom. Oh, how do you prove that? Do you have her lip on? Like, like you can't prove that. So you're just talking at this point in the court of law. So all the feds heard was kidnapping, drug mule. Oh, whoa, we got a big fish. Woo! So you irrelevant. The fed case. With the kidnapping and all that, now the problem with this is I think the feds already came out and said from the evidence they got, they don't see no arrests in the near future. Cassie is a um, witness. Now here's the problem. Remember, she said she was sex trafficked, right? His girlfriend, so he's sex trafficking his girlfriend, which is um, this is um, a it's not a touchy subject. It's a weird one because it's only used. It's only used to get someone to take a plea deal. Okay. We've seen this before. You remember uh Barry Bonds and what was the what was the runner? Um Y'all remember what was that runner's name? Um the one who got in trouble. Um who got in trouble for steroid usage? She was a sprinter. Just no, no. His wife, his wife, his wife, his Marion Jones, right? Marion Jones and um and Barry Bonds. Did you notice what the feds did with them? It's the same thing they're, they're, they're gonna try to do with Puffy. What they're gonna do is say, we're gonna go through all your life, get you for something else that's worse than this. So they're gonna get him for tax evasion. Ooh, you was ooh, tax evasion. Not this. Not hey, you filed your taxes wrong. You owe us two million. 
<laughs> not that tax evasion. We're going to send you to jail for 10 years for tax evasion. Or, or <laughs> you can plead guilty for taking steroids. Mary Jones pled guilty. Barry Bonds was like, eh, <laughs> I'm good. So they put his dude in jail. Dude sat there two years. Fuck it, gotta let him out. They don't have none. He never turned. Same thing they're gonna do with, with Puff. All right? They're gonna try to get him on something else. And right now it's the the sex trafficking. But the sex trafficking is trafficking Cassie. She right now she's the only. I, I guess would be the only victim. So now they have to get her to tell her story. And the, the problem, like I got to read that, that um, I got to really read the R. Kelly case. I got to really read it because I want to see exactly who they got him on and how. When they got him, was the girl technically underage, whoever she was? That's going to be hard to prove trafficking your wife. No, that's the problem. Okay. <laughs> There's a loophole in trafficking. Trafficking is like jaywalking. Sex trafficking and trafficking is basically this. If me and my girlfriend, right, we decide to go out of the country and me and her get in the fight, and she says, he brought me here without my will or he kidnapped me. There's no, you get in the, I flew her out. I flew her out to hit. She asked for a payment, this and this. It's not called prostitution. Trafficking with the intent to have sex is what they're going to do to someone they're trying to pin something on. This is not something they just use on random people. This is something they will use to scare the hell out of someone to get them to plead guilty to something else. It's 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 weird. It's 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 weird. Um, I, I really want to see how they try to justify trafficking your wife or ex-girlfriend. I, I, I don't know. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a weird one, but I mean, they came out and said that they don't, they don't see any, um, see any arrest coming anytime soon. So this is something that they're going to find. There has to, I, right? When we think trafficking, we think like the movies, we see like a container. <laughs> container got about 200 people in that joint. You got about 200 people, Somalian stash somewhere and he's selling them. Like that's one. And then the other one is just, the other one is if you travel with a girl outside the area, and and y'all have a fight or a breakup and whatever claim she makes. You 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 know this was a this was a thing back in the early nineties. They called it they called it like date is the it was like in the date rape phrase. This is what it was. Women were making claims. These were the claims that was being made in court for rape. Yeah, I let him eat me out. I, I, I let him stick it in, but I, I didn't give him permission to go doggy style. So he didn't have my consent for doggy style. <laughs> no, dead ass serious. <laughs> Did I, did I serious? Did I did I serious? Back in the day, they were those were how rape claims was coming, right? So, in the court of law, <laughs> the court of law, women was going in there said there was a woman like, yeah, he 
I, I, I consented of him giving me uh, having sex, but I didn't consent in him eating me out. Rape. So they had to put uh, some some of these little rules in, right, where um, because they, they said human, human nature, human behavior, you're legal, you're not going to ask a person for permission on every position you put him in. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I'm ready to turn you over now. Can I have your consent? Right. So they they started putting little things in that kind of like stopped women from winning cases like that. Because I asked the judge, I asked the judge this. I said, when a woman makes a claim, let's say she she, she claims uh, rape and she's found get, she found to be a liar. How come she doesn't get the same time that he was going to get if he was guilty? So if I'm going to get five years. And then I win the case. How come she doesn't get my five years? How come she just gets to go on like, eh, nothing happened. I'm sorry. Made it up. Just said, if we start penalizing the accuser, then one, when the, the accuser has a change of heart sometime in life, they will never come forward. I said, that's what, that's some bullshit. And they said, two, real victims will be scared to come out because knowing if they don't have the money to win the case, they're going to automatically lose it because this is what they said. There's a real fine line between consent and rape. And the fine line is this. If there's no physical evidence, right? How do they prove that it's consent and rape? Right? When when you think about being raped, you're looking for, okay, was there drugs in the, the woman's system? Right? Does she have... Hold marks, scratches, choking, right? Does she have any tie downs? Does she have any physical marks to prove it? If she doesn't have physical marks, how can she prove she it was not consensual? And he's saying it's consensual. So right there, her claim, if she can't prove it, he wins. And if he was going to get five years, she automatically gets five years, which means she goes to jail, even if she was telling the truth. If there's no physical mark, it will be hard to prove it. So a lot of women lose the case. So we can't have a penalty on it. And I was like, well, God damn. I do understand it, though. I do understand it. Right. Right. Um, like, let's say someone like. Uh, um, like, I was surprised with the Jesse Smollett one. We he was lying, but he still got accused. But they went after of some other stuff, but they didn't get him for lying. But, you know, um, when people make claims, it's just claims. Um, the Me Too movement, you know, 2000, damn near 2000 men lost their jobs, but only two went to jail because both of them damn near admitted it. That's how they got them. Hey, did y'all see the player? Repent, Jesus is coming back. Ed, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think, G, is this is this like church? You, you, uh, you giving me your tithe? All right, you are repented. Amen. I got you, boy. You are good. Welcome, J. Will. If you did a redraft of 2002, who would be your top 10? Mm. 
Okay, let's look at this. All right, we have Yao Ming, number one. Okay, number two will be Amari Stoudemire. I'm going to go with Amari Stoudemire, number two. I'm going to go with Carlos Boozer, number three. Karan Butler, number four. Tayshawn Prince, number five. Tayshawn Prince, number five. Mm. Probably Dunleavy, number six. Don't leave you number six. Nay, nay, number seven. Well, shit, he where where he where he went, he would be number seven. Someone said, "Do my drive." Oh, okay. Hell, hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Number one. Ooh. Okay, look, before... <laughs> uh... All right, look, I, I, do the same, do the same. Don't do number 2,000 where you tripping. Do, do the same teams. Like, I would have, okay, but I'm, okay, fuck the team and what the team needs. Just go by the player. Then I'm going to go. Uh, it's between Paul. Gasol and Joe Johnson. Right? So I'll probably go with Paul Gasol, Joe Johnson, number two. Number three, uh, Tony Parker, number three. Zach Randolph, probably Zach Randolph, Zach Randolph four. Mm. Maybe me, maybe me five. Maybe me five. I probably, I probably be fifth. Uh, Richard Jefferson, Jason Richardson. Gerald uh, Mecca Okafor, Gerald Wallace. You, you got Gerald Wallace six, Richard Jefferson seven. Yeah, that's why I like. I, I, I to be honest, I like doing it by teams because no matter how good you are, the team will still need what they need. So if this, if we win by Washington. 
LA Clippers, Atlanta, those teams will still need big men. So that means Paul Gasol, Zach Randolph, Paul Gasol, Zach Randolph, and Emeka Okafor would would be up there. It'd be it'll still be bigs. Nah, what 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 Ray Allen say? What Ray Allen say, y'all? What Ray Ray say? Is it on Instagram? McCants over me. You have a 6'4 shooting guard over a 6'4 point guard. <laughs> you know he was a shooting guard, right? <laughs> he was a 6'4 undersized shooting guard. I mean, hey, have fun. I was a PG, dog. <laughs> what did Ray Allen say? Jokic isn't as good this this far as LeBron, MJ, Bird, he is on Giannis has. That wasn't a big stretch at all. Jokic isn't Bird, Magic, Jordan, LeBron, Kobe. Show the whole roster. Of, oh. That's why I say I don't like showing the roster because I just like them to go off of it. What, what did anybody? What, what did Ray Allen say, y'all? Let me see Ray Allen news, man. Let me see. Reels, tags. Rallon said he saved LeBron legacy, not in those world, but. If that's what he said, he saved his legacy. Um. Now. I will say I understand what he's saying, right? I will say I understand what he's saying. I get the shot he made to get them that championship. He saved his legacy. But I will say cap. The reason I will say cap is this. LeBron James with one, two, four rings or three rings. What's the difference? Right? If he has three rings or four rings, what change? It's not like the fourth ring put him over Jordan. <laughs> He's still number two. If he had two rings, number two, three rings, number two, four rings, number two, six rings, number two. It don't matter how many rings you give LeBron James. They're going to have Jordan number one. So the legacy is going to be the legacy. He's going to always fall short. But I, I get what he's trying to say, right? But I don't think he has a – he's not – he doesn't – he already had a ring. You gave him the back-to-back -back ring. It, it doesn't change history because he still, at that point, still had a lot of shit to do before he even got in the talks. When he won the second one, it didn't put him in front of Kobe at that moment in time. So, um, it's still it's an it's opinion, right? It's opinion. Um, you know, he feels that that championship kind of helped him, and it helped himself, right? It gives him his second championship, um, puts him in the Hall of Fame. Um, it's, it's, that's kind of some weird shit when you really sit down and think about it that <laughs> you you was a bench player over there dog you're a bench player and your one shot you get the brag because you hit a good shot 
or you hit a, a very important shot and you get to say that one shot that you did save my career when motherfucker, my whole, my whole season got you to this point. And LeBron said, Hey, me winning back-to-back championships and us bringing you here helped you solidify yourself as a hall of famer. Would, would LeBron James be wrong? I don't know. I mean, those are those are like arguments. Those are like little things that we can go back and forth. But I wouldn't say he's I wouldn't say he's right or wrong. It's it's really one of those things like dead in the middle. It's Ray was on Ray. Let's react to it live. All right, let's see. Which one was this? Let me see. Is this it? Well, let's see what we let's see what we over here talking about, y'all. Come on. We'll we'll react live. Let's see what we get here. Is this the one right here? Or is there another part of it? Let me sit down. Oh. Is this the one? This is it? Um. Wait, hold on, on. let's, here, let's, let's, uh, just, oh, okay, no, 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 no. The career-changing combo JJ had with Ray Allen as a player. Ray Allen, the greatness as a, which, do y'all know which one it is? The career-changing combo, JJ Reddick, uh, or was it this one? Pop say, is it, uh, Ray Allen breaks down his legacy game six NBA final shot? Is this the one right here? Uh, Ray Allen on greatness and his incredible NBA career plus a team like a draft. The shot in the corner over Tony Parker. When we were talking earlier about preparation and routine, okay. one of the most famous shots in NBA Finals history, one of the most famous shots in NBA history. What went into that shot? Uh, that day... You, you, you think about that series, that's game six. So I did that in just, if you just think about those six games, I did that at least. I mean, he had a nice little ball head, don't he? <laughs> little shiny little fucker. 30 to 40 shots before every game. And then every shooting routine, you know, before practice in between. Uh, it was just, it was just a, uh, it was, for me, it was a, a right that I had to, to be able to push on a daily basis to be able to move and shoot a shot where I can go sideways and then ball comes up in the air. Cause now what happens is you see kids, they don't understand it when I'm yelling at them in practice saying faster, faster, don't, you know, and, and, you know, we'll shoot spot shots just to get them work on their release. And then I'll put them through drills where they got to run. So I have a drill where you start this basket, this basket, full court court. So this team, there's three guys here, three here, um, maybe four here and four here, this side, they're on team. So when they shoot, they got to run to this side. So each basket, you got to make 15 shots. So if this basket finishes with 15 first, then they all can run down in there and help this team, you know, shoot their 15 and whoever's finished wins. There's consequences you at the run. But I told them, what makes this drill easier for you is the opposite of what you think. Because if you shoot and you lollygag down to the other end, that means by the time you get down there, your rest is less. So now by the time you get down there, now you're about to have to shoot again and you're always behind. So when you shoot haul ass down here to get more rest, now you got two or three people in front of you. Now you can rest and you can gather yourself and you can go right into your shot. So the sprint is the magic. That's why you do it. Run as hard as you can to rest. Just that's what happens in game. And then take your game shot. If you can, if you can practice that, 
So you put yourself in situations that you're always used to being able to catch the ball sideways, pew, go up in the air. Because remember, shooting is just that little space that you have. You can't come from way over there in one spot to here. Like you're always in a confined space. You know, you watch the guy spacing, and if you're on this baseline, you just slide to the left or to the right a little bit. You slide to the right, and then you go up there and shoot. So you just got chop, 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 there. You don't have a chance to is go this chop, what we're chop. Say? That's in your routine. You know where to stand one on one other. On that shot, if I remember correctly, did you bring it from your left? Um, no, I brought it from right. You here. brought it from left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because but, it, but you, it, but, it came, he he got it to me like right here, and then I came down with it. Okay. You know, so it's even like a blur to me because it feels like it happened in slow motion. That play you didn't feel that. You know, I'm shooting 90 plus percent from the free throw line too. So now I'm in a position that whenever the game is on the line, it's a two point game. Everybody's like funneling the ball towards me. So all this anxiety around shooting, making free throws, being able to come through in the clutch. I was like, this, you know, I don't want to be and fortunate for for me. And you had a little more to me. You know, I mean, as great as that shot was that got him to that next level. Um, I mean, I got him to that uh, game seven. He did go over for the next game. I mean, so. You know, that doesn't take anything from what he's saying right here. And the shot the game before, which he was three for eight. They needed that shot in that moment, and he delivered. That's all they needed from Ray. He delivered when they needed him. They didn't obviously need him in the, the final game because his ass went over for four. <laughs> uh, he played 40 minutes the game they needed him. And then only 19, because we, we don't need you today, Ray. <laughs> Sit your ass back on that bench. But that's neither here nor there. They won a champion. He's a champion, one of the greatest shooters of all time. Boom. But I want to hear it. It's even ball. like a blur to me, because it feels like it happened in slow motion. It was a blur. That played it. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched the ball, even as I think about it now. I watched the ball, and it like, I, the I shot where, I don't know where in the corner is. over Tony Parker. He played his, he played his when role. When we were talking earlier about preparation and routine, Um, I got, the, I got, I got the early Ray, um, when he was in, you know, Seattle and stuff, when he played more like, he was more like a, uh, uh, like a, a Devin Booker type, right? He was so athletic that you didn't want him coming to the lane. Cause I mean, he, he had, he had bunnies. Right. So when he came to the lane, he was jumping. Right. So, you know, um, I know one thing when he always came up. Oh, my God. Woo! He must be there at Ray House. They at Ray House, y'all. They at Ray House. I know that because these motherfucker Jordans right here. Only Ray Allen got these boys. Those only made for Ray Allen in. Um, in Boston. Woo! Boy. Now he was, I mean, he went from he 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 reminded me of y'all remember J.R. Smith? Obviously, y'all remember J.R. Smith, but J.R. Smith was so athletic, but he's he's he said and shot a lot of threes. That was Ray Allen. Ray Allen, like once he got to the Seattle, he did a lot more threes and jump shooting, didn't use his athleticism. Shit, maybe that's why he lasted fucking 20 some years. But it's crazy how like talented some people are, man, and then they have to like play roles when they get around other people. Uh -huh. But here's my last subject, and this goes for my ladies, ladies. <laughs> Save y'all money, ladies. Save your money. All right. Save your money. Stop buying. Stop buying shit for no reason. Trying to impress men. Because here's a conversation that was had, and this is just 100% facts. I don't care if you got on Steve Madden's or East St. Laurent. He don't. That shit that y'all be competing with on your own. A nigga gonna fuck you if you got a Michael Kors bag or if you got a Birkin. A nigga's gonna fuck you if you in a Honda or if you in a Bentley. 
Those are not things being put forth by men as requirements. That's y'all competing with each other. I don't think you're being honest. But I agree with I no, I definitely do agree with him, you. No, but that's that's fact. I, I mean <laughs> Uh, ladies, like, like you're going out there and buying Birkin bags and all that. One that uh, a Birkin bag turns me off. As a man, Birkin bag turns me off. One is <laughs> we we know your broke ass didn't buy it, right? So that means you got some expensive dick on your phone. <laughs> you got some expensive. Dingling in your phone that now I got to compete with. Oh, no, I ain't trying now. Now I, now I got to try to up the other nigga, right? <laughs> How much that bag? 10,000. I got to try to buy 15,000. No. But we don't, we ain't, yo, you don't look sexy because you got a bag. We ain't looking, we don't care about your jewelry. You can wear Fashion Nova, $10 sundress. If the sun hit the figure right, trust me, we don't see nothing else but the camel toe. We can see through the sun. That's all we looking for. When you walking down with the clear, with the white sundress, Right, and the sun shining through it, and we, ooh, what? What you have on at that moment in time, bag, we don't care nothing about none of that. What is wrong with y'all? What's wrong with you, ladies? Stop spending your money. He said before, I, I've, he, I see it all the time, and I hear it all the time. Men are attracted can, to a woman that's, that's, that's... Can I tell you something? But you're talking about somebody who... I've lived a life where I got to experience a lot of wealth. You see, this is this is a look, thing. So I can tell the difference. Yeah. Look, niggas are fuck that. Yeah. Why them girls not white? All of these girls that they look for on TV, take away Kim Kardashian, take away select few ones. None of them ever got a fucking ring. They know everybody trying to emulate and who everybody trying to be. None of them got a stable household. A household, pardon me. None of them got families with kids and a man, and they out in Dubai as a couple. These same chicks that everybody trying to be, be in Dubai by their motherfucking self with the sheiks get pissing on them <laughs> for 25 grand. True story. The sheiks is making them fuck their kids for 50 grand. You don't see none of True. those girls with a man and a house, and they showing themselves on Christmas with the matching pajamas. Very, very few of those same girls that we all want to be have that lifestyle. No, but that goes. <laughs> no, the funny part is the dude, the dude, the dude. When he's saying all these girls going down there getting fucked by the sheik, somebody like facts. <laughs> they having these kids. They having you fuck their kids for fifty thousand. Facts. <laughs> now that's the funny part. But no, true shit. Them Africans and them them sheiks in Dubai. You see it, the Insta girl, the, the models. They ain't got no job, but they over there. Yeah. One thousand percent. But 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 it's true. No, we we don't sit around talking about hey man, oh shorty got a nice ass bag. We don't what? What? Same reason, fellas, stop buying real jewelry. Who who you buying jewelry for? You buying jewelry for dudes, dog. You're buying jewelry for dudes. You're spending a hundred thousand to impress a dude. Cause I can tell you, ain't no woman on this earth, unless she's a diamond dealer, can tell you <laughs> if your shit is real or fake. When you see the time, the diamond testers, it be no other niggas calling other niggas out. Women don't know what the fuck they looking at, dog. <laughs> Remember, these ain't re them rings and shit, right? Them big, they don't know the difference of a real one and a Fugazi one. They don't know the difference between a Patek watch and a fake Patek or a Roly or another Roly. Women don't know nothing about no watch game for you to go spend your money on it.
Your shit, your watch cannot work at all. And you put, you bezeled it out with some fake ass diamonds. You bling, 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 you caught her eye. <laughs> when Rick Ross got caught, he got called out by a dude. Ain't no woman look at that and say, that's fake. <laughs> She's seen all that green glisten on that. Ooh, and he said, yo, baby, these emeralds, this shit could have been motherfucking Heineken bottle glass. She don't know. <laughs> she don't know the difference between emeralds and Heineken bottle glass. Panties off. Rick Ross got it. Most of the things we buying, we buying to impress the same sex, dog. We're trying to get validation from the the, the dude. Women don't know the, if a girl walked in here with a fake a fake Birkin bag, you think I know the difference? I don't know. I can't tell you if your panties, I mean, besides it saying Victoria's Secrets, I can't tell you if you got it from motherfucking Target or not. Take them off. <laughs> Take them off. That's it. The only thing I want to know is real is the box. Did you were you born with it or did you get it from Dr. <laughs> from Dr. Miami? Where did your box come from? That's all I today, that's all I need to know if it was real or not. <laughs> that's all I want to know if it's real. Where did you were you born with the real? They need to put tags on it now. <laughs> <laughs> they starting to sell. I heard they selling it down on Fifth Ave. They, they got it on Fifth Ave. It's next to the Gucci purses, dog. You can just go down to the Gucci purse. They're like, yeah, let me get. Oh, this look like a nice one. Let me go ahead, take this right to the doctors. Put this one on. <laughs> That's it. We don't need no. We don't know nothing about the bags of jewelry. Save your money, man. Start caking up for real. Stop trying to impress each other. I'm seeing people in here, they got 52 chains on, coming to do interviews. For what? Oh, I just want to I just want to do an interview with you, dog. You over here trying to stunt with all this goddamn plastic. Here the shit just sounding like 10. This how the shit sound. This this how they be moving on the thing. This how the shit sound. <laughs> like, come on, y'all. Let's stop. Stop. Right here. Y'all don't know if it's real or fake. <laughs> this shit just look good against my skin. If I told you it costs 10 grand to pop, what you gonna do? You're gonna take your ass on Google and you're gonna Google this. You can't tell if it's 10 grand or 200 each. I can tell you I ain't paying 10 grand. <laughs> I ain't paying 10 grand. I can tell you that. Shit, fuck, I need to pay 10 grand for my skin to look a little glistly. All right? Girls be like, oh my God, you got the Van Cleef? The fuck is the Van Cleef? What you got on? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got the Van Cleef. <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Well, I, shit, I just seen it the other day. A person was, well, what color is that one? This Paris blue. Paris blue? Yeah, they don't make this one no more. <laughs> For real? Where'd you get it from? Paris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, what you talking about? All I did was find rare colors that they don't make no more. Hey, jury man, can you make this dog? <laughs> uh, I don't, this ain't Van Cleef. This is what, this is Clef. <laughs> this is, but you would never know. See, I can be trolling myself. You don't know. That's the point. Stop spending your money on shit that has no. Don't go broke, people. Trying to impress people. Well, shit, not even imp impress. If you rich, you got money, buy fake. Buy fake. You don't need to buy real. Nobody knows the difference. 
Just trying to, just trying to let you know, right? You know, take it from me. Trust me. Look, I, I, I'm in a locker room. We, we, we. It, it's really, it's really one of those things where you people are trying to stun on each other. Like, this is a true story. If I came into the locker room and I have a one of one. Louis Vuitton bag, like 1,000%, at least three of those players is going to Louis Vuitton and try to order one or try to find another rare one. I remember an older player, man, is like, man, I can get that same bag. That same bag he spent 10 grand from, I know somebody who will make it for $300. Make it the fuck out of here. Swear to God. He said, watch, in a week, I'm going to have the same bag. And he's and he's not going to know the difference. And I can tell you which one it was. It was this one. It was when this one came, this bag right here, 2006. See, right, 2006, when this bag came out right here. And sure enough, no one knew the difference. Looked identical. $300. Right here. Them Hermes belt buckles you be seeing? They go to China. <laughs> Them Louis Vuitton built by China. Right now, you can go, you can, and what people do is rich people, like like rich people, like if Kim Kardashian told, if if, she, if you look at Kim Kardashian, I guarantee you 60, 70% of her, her, her stuff is fake. Because y'all gonna think it's real. What is she, why spend the money on it? If it's going to pass, just get a really great knockoff. Get a really great knockoff. Save your money, especially fellas. Fellas, come on. Why? What well, is it? Why buy? Why buy a five, six hundred dollar Louis Vuitton belt buckle when you can go pay 50 to 100 dollars and then spend 400 dollars? On the vagina that you get from <laughs> the belt buckle. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. If you buy a $500 belt buckle and then you spend $400, that's $900. You done spent. Where you can buy for $50, look the same, <laughs> and spend the $400 on the ass, and you spend $450. I done just saved you $450. Come on, I'm trying to teach y'all something. Trying to teach y'all something. But look, it's Thursday. Tom <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm heading to Arizona. So if you in Arizona, let me know. I'm, I got my I got my podcast. I got my podcast. Uh not my podcast, but I got my um I got my, my my kit so I can travel. Got my microphone, got my microphone, and I got my laptop so I can do a live from out there. Um, because I they 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 sending us on. It's like a vacation, to be honest. Like I thought we was going out there to work. They they flying us. Listen, underdog, hey, underdog. <laughs> Woo. I, I love, I love, I love you as a sponsor. They flying this private. Me, Kenya, Rashad, Brendan. Private to just go chill at the Final Four. We not even working. Our camera crew is staying. We not even going there to work, y'all. We just going there just to relax and chill. So I'm just going to bring this and see if I can get some interviews for my goddamn self for y'all. They flying this private there. 
Yeah. So, um, I I might listen. I might try to do a live before I I leave uh, tomorrow. If not, I'm gonna just do one Saturday. But look, thank y'all for coming out. I I, I hope y'all really understand my chaos. It's all controlled, right? It's wordplay to get big media jumping, right? Like, I don't troll. I don't know if that's called trolling or I just leave out little information or just understand that I know people only listen to certain things. Like when I, oh, I'm better than Steph Curry by the age of 25. And I know you didn't hear by the age of 25. And then y'all going to run with it, pump me up, and I'm good. Right? But watch. I already warned y'all what I'm going to do. <laughs> what I'm going to do after Jokic wins it. I'm a fake mad and then watch everybody take off with it because I'm not going to tell them the list that he's in, which he will be fifth out of the list. So, all right, peace out. Enjoy. Um, shout out to, uh, here's a shout out to um, Ty, uh, shout out to, to Tyree, uh, was it Eason? You got exactly what your shirt said. <laughs> and he wore a shirt on the bench today that said, Warriors come out and play. <laughs> and they barbecue that motherfucker. <laughs> Houston Rockets. <laughs> come out and play. <laughs> and that's what they did. So how you going to wear a shirt that's taunting the other group and you ain't even playing? <laughs> I would have been in the locker room like, dog, stop that shit, man. Had them motherfuckers out there going next yard. Ooh, I had a teammate do that shit to me. When I told, I told the internet or the media that Dwayne Wade couldn't shoot, and we just gonna sit at this. I said, we gonna we don't care about no Dwayne Wade. This is when he was just young. We don't care about no Dwayne Wade. We just gonna do what they did in Olympics. His ass can't shoot. He came out and gave us all of 38, 39. And uh Larry Hughes, <laughs> Larry Hughes came to me and said, Hey man, if you're gonna start like stirring, stirring this shit up, man, you're gonna have to guard the motherfucker yourself. <laughs> You gonna have to guard himself. Uh, uh, you just ain't gonna be talking shit about people. Then I gotta play defense on them. <laughs> Ooh, man, because look, I can tell you this: he had got in foul trouble. They put Dwayne. I, they I had to guard Dwayne Wade for a whole three, four minutes. I was pretty sure it felt like. He had 38 on me in those three minutes. Those was the roughest three minutes of my life. Dude, spinning, spinning, slashing, cutting, dunking, swatting, stealing. Like, bro, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Relax. Use your words. All this violence you're putting upon me ain't even warranted. Whatever, the, whatever was said, they misquoted me. Okay, because God damn. <laughs> Woo! Use your words, bro. All this dunking coming through the lane, flexing and shit. <laughs> I, I didn't, I, I, what I said was, came off a little bit wrong at this moment in time. Sorry, my brother. And trust me, that was the last time I talked shit about a player while I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I was not hey listen I can tell you this I was not ready for that I was not ready for that smoke mm -mm. No, no 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 I learned early in my career <laughs> there's just some people you just shut up on see I can talk shit now cause I ain't gotta guard nobody cause I know damn well if I said this and then had to guard Jokic <laughs> 
<laughs> 75. <laughs> he would have had 75 on me because I know he would have took that shit personal. Woo, Lord, I don't want to. Look, hey, I can tell you this right now, dog. <laughs> if I had to guard the Euro today talking that Euro shit, I'm pretty sure Luca would have tried to score. It would have been all kind of, Whatever language he speak, <laughs> he would have started doing a little shit, waving motherfuckers all my man. Hold on. <laughs> Been looking around. <sighs> that ain't hey, Dwayne Wade. I, I don't even think I beat. I, I think I went three and 16 or one and 10 against Dwayne Wade for our career. The way he was busting my ass. And I can tell you this. I got the win when I was in Orlando when I had Dwight. <laughs> Say this shit now. <laughs> I got Dwight back here, God damn it. He can't shoot, y'all. Dwight, get him. While I was a wizard, nah. He too, hey, listen, he was, <laughs> he, he, Dwayne Wade was a two-way player against me, God damn it. <laughs> I tried to post him up one time. <clears throat> Damn, you strong. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> now you ain't going nowhere. Nah, I got I, I got it. Hey, Gil, pass it. Hold on. I got I got it. I'm going to do something. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't going to double, huh? Now, the way we got that, like, damn. He, he, he embarrassed me, dog. Come on. Can you can you put white, uh, white chocolate back on me, dog? Here, give me that white chocolate and old ass Gary Payton. I got something for them, too, god damn it. Get this strong buffalo motherfucker off me. But all right, I'm out. Peace. And now, peace.